Hello, I'm Lenny McGill. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to talk about how you can use modern airsoft guns to improve both speed and accuracy. In fact, not only can it help you improve your speed and accuracy, but also to help you develop dexterity skills, manipulation skills, sight picture, trigger pull, as well as tactics in ways that you can't even use live firearms. You'll save time and money because you don't have to drive to the range and you don't have to shoot live ammunition. You see, these modern airsoft guns have come a long way. This A4 carbine is basically the full size and full weight of the real gun and it shoots as fast as I can pull the trigger. So if done correctly, you can use these guns to become a better shooter. And that's what this program is all about. It's titled Dynamic Tactical Training with Airsoft. All right, let's start this first segment of the program talking about some of the equipment we'll be using throughout the show so you understand what we've got and you also have a good overview of what's available out there in the marketplace. Just like any hobby or any sport, there's always your entry-level equipment, there's your mid-level equipment, and there's your high-end. Uh, for tactical training, for purposes that we're talking about, I, I think the high-end equipment is going to give you the best bang uh, for the buck because you're really going to use it and be able to use it like a real firearm, train with it like a real firearm, it has the same weight, same feel, same size and hence same sight picture everything is the same and you can transition from these guns right to the real guns with really uh, no uh, interference whatsoever it's, just, it's really basically just using and training just like a real gun um, but let's start with the handguns and then we'll get into the carbines keeping in mind that airsoft implies or refers to the airsoft pellet itself so there is the pellet we can get a good close-up of that little guy and these um, uh, basically come in big bags all right, they're plastic pellets, and um, they're pretty lightweight. Uh, but don't be, you know, complacent with these because they can hurt and will hurt and will take out an eye. Uh, they, um, I have seen, you know, kids bleeding, uh, basically not penetrating the skin, but impacting the skin so much that, that blood oozes out. It's not like going into the skin, but certainly can hurt you and certainly can uh, cause damage to your face and other uh, uh, soft spots. So be very careful uh, and be very aware that these are not toys. Even the cheapest of the air guns can hurt you. So always wear a protective eye uh, gear when you're working with these and always be aware of the fact that uh, you should keep the gun pointing in a safe direction. All right, that's our little safety trip and it's always important because again we're training with these as if they're real firearms so we want to maintain the same protocol that we should with real firearms so keep the gun pointing in a safe direction finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot maintain and see a sight picture uh, all those things are very important and things that you should train with and keep in mind never get lazy with a gun and start to point them around because they're toys quote unquote uh, think of these as real guns use them as real guns and hence that will transfer into your skills with the real guns. All right, so the airsoft is, refers to the pellet because there are several different types of airsoft guns. One of which, the low end entry, the Walmart special, is basically a spring operated gun. And here it is, it's a Glock. All right, looks like a Glock, feels like a Glock, not quite as heavy as a Glock because the entire gun is plastic, okay, including the slide. But again, feels realistic, same sight picture as the gun. Same feel, same grip angle. Everything's the same. So it's a good transition tool. Uh, there's a couple um, disadvantages to the cheap gun like this, okay, because this is your low-end entry version. Uh, it does have a magazine. Uh, you can see that it's, all these magazines work basically the same. They're spring-loaded. So there's a spring right here. You pull down, open that up, drop your pellets in one at a time. All right, a little laborious task, but there's the pellets already loaded. Uh, to shoot this gun, basically just insert the magazine, pull back the slide, and that's the spring. It's now loaded. I'm going to turn it over here and actually shoot one of my targets. And you can see, hence penetration. Now that's a cardboard target. That is just a spring. Bang, right through. So, you know, it is not a toy. But it only shoots one shot at a time. I've got to go ahead and rack it again and shoot again. Now that one didn't penetrate. It actually hit and bounced back at me. So again, keeping in mind um, that um, this is a one-shot gun, you have to cock it every time. Uh, it can help you from your draw, help you maintain you know, your, your first shot accuracy, but again, because it's light and it's plastic, it doesn't have the same feel as the real gun. 
So that's your entry level. Let's move into uh, something that it would be your next level up. These are the uh, airsoft guns. That was a spring-related airsoft gun. This is a gas gun that we're going to look at. Gas comes in these large canisters. It's called green gas. All right, and let's see if I can hold it the right, right way. There it is, green gas. Okay, uh, this is like nineteen dollars for you know a bottle of green glass or, or or maybe a little less. Um, the gas now powers the firearm. Uh, should I say the airsoft gun? And it will propel this pellet a little faster than the spring action would. All right, so we've got a variety of different guns here. I'll show you, and then we'll we'll shoot some. First, uh, here's a a full size Beretta uh, with the uh, four handle there because this can shoot full auto. This is a pretty neat gun. Um, the magazine is a big old magazine. There it is. And so put this guy up in here like that. And the gas would be entered right in here. You can see that little nib there. That's where the gas can be entered. So the, the gas or the gun is powered by the gas that's stored inside the magazine. And that's pretty universal on all the guns we're about to show you. All right. So you actually would put the gas in here like this. And let me go ahead and show you how to do the gas one time, and that way we'll get this uh, procedure out of the way as well. So there's the gas can. You can see it's got a small little uh, pin-sized uh, nozzle. And we're going to hold this magazine straight up and down. We're going to put the gas in just like this. OK. And as soon as it does that, see it's starting to spill over the top. It's full. So I see if I can top it off a little bit more, and that's basically it. All right. So then we'll go ahead and we'll reinsert this guy, pull the slide back, and get a shot out here. And don't know how many rounds I have, but there it is. That's kind of fun, huh? So that's your full auto uh, Beretta, and um, basically you just shoot until you're done, huh? all day long. Another gun we'll look at here is a 1911. Um, now, again, this, this gun is heavy. It feels like the real gun. Uh, it's a fun gun. It shoots full auto. The sight picture is great. You see the accuracy is unbelievable at these short distances. Uh, these guns will shoot anywhere from 250 to 350 feet per second. All right, that spring gun is probably shooting about 200 feet a second. Uh, these are a little bit more amped up, depending upon how much gas is left inside the canister, uh, canister and the length of the barrel and a couple other variations there. But that's uh, uh, an amazing uh, feat. And the fact that, again, at these combat distances, 7 yards, 21 feet, they're dead accurate. Okay, They have a, a, probably a 1-inch group range there, and we'll demonstrate that a little later. Next gun we're going to look at is a 1911. And you can see, uh, looks pretty real. There it is. Give me a look from the other side. It's got the uh, ambidextrous safety. All right. Functions just like the real gun. So you can just practice all your techniques. Same grip, same sight picture. All right. Uh, magazine is a little smaller, of course. There's the magazine. It has the same principle. We're going to go ahead and put the gas in the bottom just like that. All right. And then we can load this guy up. Cock it. Let's see if it's going to work here. Just like that. And there it locks back on the last uh, shot, which is also realistic, okay? Because if you wanted to, you could drop the magazine tactically, reload, slide forward, and go about your shooting. So it does have a lot of the same characteristics and feel as the real handgun. In fact, this one is almost full weight. Not quite. A little bit loose up here on the top, but it is a metal upper. It's not a plastic. It's metal up here. And um, because the magazine's heavy and it holds all that gas, this thing feels like the real gun. And that's the 1911. Uh, another version of the Glock will be this guy right here. Okay, And this um, has the metal slide now. And it's airsoft as well. Here's the magazine. You can see on the bottom. Uh, we would load this magazine up uh, with our, our BBs and go ahead and put, put our gas in the bottom here like this. Uh, basically, again, if you look, it has the counter on this side, but that's just a, uh, uh, for dressing because on the side here is where you actually get to see the rounds that are loaded. And this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, probably 20, 21 rounds that you could put in there. You just pull your spring down, take one of these little BBs at a time and just drop them in. And that's probably about it right there. So then you take your gun and I believe I've got gas in here. Let's just make sure. Turn my green gas over. Get this guy loaded up. And you'll see it spill over as soon as it's full. And there it was, right there. And, oops, well, make sure that's released. Release the slide and turn and shoot. Just like that. You can see this thing will shoot as fast as you can pull the trigger and fairly accurate too, accurately too. If you can look, you know, I'm aiming for the five and there's my shots. And I'm aiming, you know, fast shots, but um, I could probably go faster if I really get ramped up. And that's what we're going to talk about later on in the program, getting ramped up and, and learning how to uh, access that site using these tools to see the site faster, get that first shot good, and then go from target to target because that's what this gun really can help you with. Not only that first shot, but really target to target acquisition. These airsoft guns really can help you do that because the same skills you develop here will apply to your real life firearms. The same techniques because we're talking about your eyes. You know, we can get rid of recoil, we can get rid of the smoke and the bang. It's really now focusing on our mind to make us faster, more accurate shooters. And that's what these guns are all about. Now, let's move into uh, the rifles themselves. Now, there are two types of rifles that we, uh, uh, we know are available right now. One is kind of the uh, entry-level rifle. Uh, this is it right here. Looks very similar to this other gun. Uh, but it's plastic in the upper. And... Um, uh, that's the main difference, okay? Plus the internal mechanism is not as robust or, I guess, uh, uh, fine-tuned as this other gun that we're about to show you, okay? So this is the Sporter version. Okay, looks great. Same sight picture as a real CAR-15, okay? Everything operates the same, mounts the same, feels the same. Not quite the full weight because it's a plastic upper, but it will shoot almost as fast as you can pull the trigger. Now let's listen to this real quickly. Okay, I don't have any, ma any bullets in here real quick, but I'm just going to show you the difference between this one and the other one. See, there's a slight delay. Watch my finger. I can actually work my finger faster than this gun can work. But that, that's one of the problems with this gun, okay, is that I can actually work it faster than the real, uh, than, than it's able to go. That's why I suggest if you're going to get into the carbine training, you get into um, the higher end carbine, which is the, the metal upper, okay? Now, it's full size, it's full weight, and this gun operates as fast as I can pull the trigger. So let's just go ahead here and I'll show you. And it's shooting anywhere from 350 to 400 feet per second. Now these guns, both the last uh, guns I've shown you, are electric, not gas powered, although they do have a pump inside that creates the energy or the gas to propel this, uh, this BB down range. Um, you don't use the green gas, you use a battery. And there's the battery in this particular model is housed back here. Some of the models, the battery is housed up here. Uh, the key to this whole thing, again, is that you charge it up. You can put about three or 400 rounds into your um, uh, your magazine. You see on the bottom here, I'm, tw I'm turning this forward and that basically takes the BBs and pushes them up into uh, this feeding tube or loading tube. So you just push that forward just like that. And you can adjust this a little bit more to improve the accuracy, but again uh, at these distances, distances I find this thing is truly accurate and again as fast I can pull the trigger. You can see the trigger work. Come on in here close and let's just watch. I can't get ahead of this guy. Okay, and you can see what it's doing to my target now. All right, I want you to really come down here. This gun shooting 350, 400 feet a second, it's shredding the cardboard. All right, so now 
granted, it's just cardboard, but it will hurt your skin. So do not take this gun lightly. This gun will definitely, you know, make you bleed and certainly really do severe damage to your eyes and other soft tissue areas. So always wear a full face mask whenever you're working with this in, in a force on force situation. The other thing to talk about this gun is that, you know, it, it is accessorizable, if that's a word, okay? You can put all your custom accessories on it from your red dot sights to your Picatinny rails to your forearm, foregrips and all that stuff. I mean, this, this gun is just like the real thing. So that's one of the, the beauties of the airsoft training guns like this is that you can put all the things on that you think you want to use in the field and try them out and test with them and train with them to see what really works for you. Okay, does that really work? Does it feel good? Before you get out into the range or before you get out into the field, you can practice with all these things and make sure you're comfortable with this foregrip and how it feels. Does it make you faster? Shoot without it, shoot with it. Okay, are you more accurate because of this? Is it more comfortable? Can you carry this gun for four or five hours with a sling? Okay, and try that, you know, walk around, see how that really works in a real world environment. Uh, don't just buy all this stuff and think it's gonna work. Slap it on and actually work it. You can take this gun and shoot it in your backyard, in your house, and do all kinds of things, again, that you can't really do with a live fire firearm. All right? So that's the uh, A4 carbine. It's quite a gun, and I'm going to use it a lot in this uh, upcoming program. A couple other things I want to show you real quick before we get into the next uh, phase of this uh, show is, uh, first, of course, eyeglasses. You've got to wear eyeglasses whenever you're shooting these things. All right? these BBs will bounce back and hit you, okay? They're gonna lose a little bit of velocity, but they still could hurt, especially if you're up close. So if you're shooting something, there's a wall back there, be aware that BB can bounce back and hit you in the face. So always wear some glasses, be safe, okay? All right, another thing we're gonna use in this program a lot is a timer. I'm a big believer in a timer. Timers help you uh, determine your progress, your real speed, and help you determine What's fast and what's not fast? And what, what things you can do to make you a little faster? You know, your mind plays tricks on you. Uh, we've done drills with people. We put them out here and, and we say, well, look, you got three seconds. They think, oh, wow, I better hurry up. And they, oh, blah, 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 and they shoot a real quick and all of a sudden they miss a lot of targets and they have a lot of time left. And I say, hey, slow down. You got three seconds, that's a lot of time. Now, the way we use this timer in, in this drill, because it doesn't pick up the shots, is we're gonna use it in the par set. So I've got it set right now for a two second par. So you push the button and two seconds later, it goes again, all right? So you can adjust that any way you want. You can make it down to you know, 0.5 seconds if you want, or you can make it four seconds if you want. So that gives you a, a window of opportunity to shoot in. You start at the beep, you do your shoots, and then you stop, or you have to stop between that, or you didn't make that time, all right? That'll help you learn how to become faster because you'll understand that you have time to see that front sight to access that and to go from target to target and how much time it takes to do those things. Again, most people think that, you know, gee, two seconds, that's really fast, I better hurry. But your mind works a lot faster than you imagine. So if you slow down a little bit, you'll actually be faster. Pretty, pretty funny to say that, isn't it? If you slow down, you'll be faster and you'll be more accurate for sure. All right. Last couple things I want to show you are some targets that we'll be using too. All right, uh, in this program, uh, I've got a couple uh, targets, and these are available uh, for you to download on our website for free. Okay, uh, you can make these yourself, obviously, or if you want to go up and, and download a PDF and print them off, you can. Uh, again, simple targets. Okay, you, you don't need to spend a lot of money. These are easy. Okay, this is a four by six um, A zone, I call it. Okay, that's my five. Anything outside of that is going to be a four. So here's five points and anything on the paper is a four, okay? I have a headshot target, which we've developed, and you can see how perfect it is for the head. I'm gonna go ahead and show you, boom, okay? That's our headshot target. Now watch this. Here's the bad guy target, boom. And now we're gonna put this right over top of it, and you'll see how the scoring zone works, again. So it, they're, they're real size, full size head, headshot targets. So the key is that uh, we've got this guy mounted up here like this, and we've assigned numbers to you know, certain areas. Obviously, the five being the kill zone, a four being less effective, ones being maybe misses or maybe just grazing shots, and two, you know, we don't know what's gonna happen when you're hitting this soft tissue here. You could, you know, you could hit someone in the throat and they may live for 10 minutes, 
they may die instantly, uh, but certainly when you hit someone in the five zone, uh, that's an area that is, you know, basically considered a, a stopping, dropping shot, and that's some of the things that, uh, you know, the air marshals and uh, other people we work with uh, want to do on a, uh, uh, a, a an on-demand basis is to be able to access and shoot uh, headshots. So uh, that's a great way to use the airsoft guns is uh, to access and be able to shoot one shot, bump, bump, and then another target. Because you're able to shoot multiple targets, this takes you way ahead of just the lasers practice. And the fact that you're actually shooting targets and you're seeing a result really makes it a lot more fun. And that's one of the things about this, is this is not only um, tactical training that you can use, but it's a lot of fun. And you can challenge people. Uh, and later on in the program, I'm going to show you a, a course of fire that I put together that is fun, it's easy. And you can adjust the times based upon your skill level. But I put it together so that, you know, Basically, anybody who has a little bit of firearm training can come in and shoot this thing and get a score and then improve upon their score to the point where they can really improve their abilities when they go out in the uh, real world or into a range with a real firearm. And last, I want to talk about uh, one of my favorite things is concealed carry. Right now, I'm actually carrying a Glock airsoft gun in a concealed uh, carry mode. These are the um, uh, tactical concealment pants that we have. Uh, basically, the holster is built into the pants, and you can see how nice that gun sits there. But again, it allows me to get up, access, shoot, and train from concealment. And that's another thing you can do with the tactical guns that will really help you become a better shooter and help your concealed carry efforts because not only now are you working concealment, but you're working presenting that gun, getting that first shot and seeing that first shot and seeing that front sight because if you want to be a faster shooter, you've got to see that front sight faster. All right, let's get started and uh, get into our next segment coming up. Okay, in this segment, I'd like to discuss some shooting techniques as they pertain to airsoft guns. Now, first, of course, is safety. You know, you always want to be aware that you want to keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction at all times. Okay, uh, you know, just like a real gun. Okay, so when we're training with airsoft, as I said earlier, the, the beauty of it is, is that you want to maintain the same protocol because you want to take that same protocol with these guns out into the real world with real firearms. So... Safety, safety, safety. You always keep yourself uh, aware of the muzzle direction. Keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Uh, always be aware of your target, what you're shooting at. Make sure no one is downrange, okay? We never really want to shoot at people unless we're playing that game. And if we do play that game, we want to be dressed and have eye uh, protection, uh, certainly face protection on too. I'm not just talking goggles, but you know, I think I'd feel much more comfortable if I had the full-on paintball mask because these will hurt your skin and you certainly don't need to get all marked up um, uh, beyond repair, certainly, okay? All right, um, before I start, though, let's talk about accuracy a little bit with these guns. Uh, from what I've seen, uh, at the 7 to 10 yard distance, these guns are going to print about 1 inch, okay? And that's just based upon, you know, me playing with them and, and, and experimenting with them. I don't think they're going to be a lot more accurate uh, than these particular guns. However, if you do get the longer barreled gun, obviously, uh, sniper type rifle or something like that, you probably will get more accuracy and more velocity. But again, that one inch group is plenty accurate for the tactical training that I'm trying to demonstrate and talk about today because we want to be able to train for speed and for that combat or self-defense accuracy. And self-defense accuracy, again, is, is basically a, a fairly large size target, 11 inches across, or excuse me, eight, eight inches across, 11 inches tall, okay? Same thing with a headshot, basically. Most heads are about 12 inches, some are larger, and most are about seven, eight inches across, all right? So go ahead and measure your own head sometime, and you'll see what, you, what I'm talking about. Uh, so those are pretty big targets at these close distances. Uh, the difference is that these targets don't go anywhere. They stay in there, and they're pretty still. Uh, in the real world, of course, people are moving, and that's what's neat about these guns. You can take these force on force. But right now, I want to go ahead and practice with the uh, paper targets, and I want to uh, demonstrate some accuracy. So what, uh, let me go ahead and do the pistol first. So you can see I've got it in a holster. Uh, this is uh, the Glock. I'll get this out of the way for you there, Michael. And uh, I'm going to shoot probably, uh, looks like about, 
oh, six yards, maybe five yards. Uh, just simple accuracy. I'm going to aim for, uh, let's just aim for that five spot and see how many shots I can get and how close they'll be. That one flew on me. They're all shooting to the right a little bit. Okay, so four shots. And I've got two holes in here. So there's my group. And I said, that's about a one inch group for the four shots. Not bad. Certainly acceptable, like I said, for true combat or self defense accuracy. I'm going to do the same thing with this uh, carbine. This time I, I won't go freehand. I'm going to actually shoot off this rest. Now, again, what I talked about, remember the carbine, and uh, we talked about what's neat about this particular gun is that it's got all these accessories. Well, the same is true with that Glock. I can put on the Glock uh, all the different um, lights and scopes and all that those things in. Uh, this, uh, of course, has the Picatinny rail, and I've got a foregrip attached to it. Uh, this foregrip actually has the bipod. Watch this. That's pretty cool, huh? So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing locked into a bipod. Go ahead now and just get a, a let this gun settle right there in the middle, say, of that target. And now my goal is just to keep this gun still and see how many shots group. All right, let's see. Here we go. Okay, so there's four shots, and I had one flyer. But there's three shots right there, and this one flyer. So again, you know, really, you want to throw out your flyer. I've got an inch group uh, <laughs> or less, uh, but certainly um, acceptable combat accuracy for the type of training we want to do. All right, and that's really what I'm trying to prove to you. These guns have the accuracy, the feel, the weight, and the same exact sight picture, grip angle, everything else that you need to be able to practice and improve. So. That in mind, uh, let's concentrate on the fundamentals, uh, and especially with an airsoft gun, fundamentals are even more important because the airsoft travels slower than a real bullet, significantly slower in this case. With a carbine, again, we're talking about 350, maybe 400, it's about 10 times less than a real bullet. The real bullet travels about 3,200, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, but right around 3,000, certainly in the 3,000 range, feet per second. This is 350 or so, so eight or nine times, certainly uh, eight or nine times, probably 10 times as fast. So the point is, is that the airsoft pellet remains in the barrel longer. So you've got to train yourself to have even better fundamentals, that is technique of follow through than you do with a real gun. That will translate to the real gun because if you do maintain follow through to get accurate shots over and over again, that will enable you to fight recoil better from a real gun. Now, we all know if you've shot an AR-15 or a, a 223, it's not a very hard kicking recoiling gun. A lot of the recoil is eaten up by the spring in the, uh, in the, um, uh, the stock area and it's more of a twang than it is a okay so you can fight that recoil with your proper techniques and the proper techniques are <clears throat> of course your grip and your stance all right and we know that if you shoot the real AR-15 a lot that your grip and stance mean a lot to your ability to repeat and shoot more accurate shots from shot to shot okay so we have two different things going on we have the first shot and then that second shot where's that going to be are we going to be able to put two shots within that same combat range that we're looking for? We're going to be able to put two shots within a kill area on a consistent basis because that's what we're talking about, being able to, to deliver two shots and then go to the next target two shots more. So you can use this gun to train that technique, all right, as well as the, the handguns as well. Of course, this is more visual. And uh, I kind of like it a lot, so I'm going to play with it a lot today. So again, I'm looking at this target, and there's my shots. And you can see that I've got some great accuracy because I'm training myself to maintain that same grip and the same barrel plane from shot to shot. There's no movement, or not a lot of movement. You can see this is a good, 
good indication, and this is a very good indication because it got two very close, fast shots in less than a second, almost the same hole. So if you can do that here with an airsoft, you can do the same thing out in the real world with a real gun. What's the difference? A little bit of recoil, because we've already talked about the fact that 223 doesn't recoil that much, and a lot of noise and a lot of smoke. But those are the things you want to overcome anyways, because you want to concentrate on the front sight and your sight picture. Okay? Sight picture is putting the sight on the target that we're looking for. Sight alignment is lining up the sights right here. Now I've got this red dot scope that I'm working with, and so I'm really concentrating just on one thing. I'm not working with the, uh, the rear sight and the front sight. I'm working with the red dot. And that's another great thing you can do with the airsoft is train yourself to work with the red dot scopes faster. All right? There's a little bit of transition time, not much, but once you get it dialed in, and once you dial in your, your mind, your eyes to the red dot, you can be extremely fast. All right. Now, one of the things that you can use airsoft for as well, especially when you're printing on paper, is to start to see the angle or direction of your shots. That will help you determine your tendencies. So if we look at this grouping right here, I went ahead and I think it was uh, these two right here was my first shot. Then I swung over and got this target, and, I, and, then, and now think about what happened, okay? I, I was coming from here, two great shots, but um came over here, first shot, second shot, because I was swinging towards that. Okay, so a little bit of, I guess, not enough hesitation. I was shooting as I was moving, which is okay at these close distances, but it will extrapolate itself far out at a long distance. So the key to this is to train myself to come across and stop, execute. Now, let's look over here to this other target. So I was one, two, one, two, came back, and what happened again? Same thing, first shot, second shot. Because I was swinging from right to left, first shot's here, second shot's here. In a perfect world, I would stop and get both shots right here. But at these close distances, hey, it's okay. The problem is if I take this out to 25 yards, these shots are gonna be a lot farther apart. And one of these is gonna be a miss. Okay, probably this one. Probably get this first one here, but this one's going to be off there at 25, 50 yards. So we want to be able to train ourselves with these airsoft guns and see the tendencies we have as we print paper to see how we can get our shots faster. So let's do it one more time. So again, first shot is right here on the first target. Again, great group. Swinging from here, bang, bang. Okay. So that time was better. First two shots, second two shots. Still acceptable. Hey, I'll take that all, to all day long, okay? It's in, the, it's in the kill zone. Two great shots right here in the upper shoulder. You better believe it. Over here, swung over, two shots over here. So again, really good stopping ability. That's what I'm looking to do. Get up, see the sight, stop. See the sight, stop. Because once you can do that, you can take that same skill out into the real world with your real firearm. Okay, because there is no recoil and no smoke and no noise, once again, this allows us to really focus on some of the true fundamentals that relate to speed and accuracy. And that is front sight, front sight, and front sight. One, seeing the front sight faster. Two, being able to know that the front sight is going to come to the same place each and every time you present the gun. All right? Now, I've got uh, uh, this uh, chalker sling on right now. And again, this is one of the other cool things about Airsoft is you can practice with all your accessories. What's it really like to wear this thing for 10 hours a day? Okay? What's it feel like? Okay? Again, the, the chalker sling has uh, a little bit of uh, support on both shoulders, which I really like. It allows you to work hands-free with the gun. You see a lot of uh, uh, people in Iraq using these type of slings because they need to be able to work with their, their hands, be able to do different things, write, eat, drink, all that good stuff, but have the gun available at a moment's notice. All right? So that's one of the things that you can work with 
uh, with airsoft and not feel crazy walking around your house with a real gun. Uh, and you can also then pick it up and shoot at a moment's notice, okay, because that's what really happens in the real world sometimes. All right. So that being the case, um, you know, the front sight, being able to see that front sight faster, again, is, is the true essence of practice. So what I, I want to talk about real quickly is mounting the gun, especially this type of gun, to uh, your shoulder. Uh, what I find for me is that, you know, in, in a real speed environment, if I'm looking for speed, I need to get that gun up high on my shoulder and I need to bring the gun up to my eye, all right? Now, if I can get Michael to zoom in here right at me, I want to show you something here real quick, okay? So you see I've got a red dot on my sight, and you see how that thing is intersecting with my eye? Can you see my eye in the background? So my goal is to be able to bring that front sight up every time to the same spot, okay? And now the question is, you know, with all these accessories, what's going to help me do that faster? The foregrip? Do I see that thing? Is that where I want it to be? Do I? Because yeah, what I don't want to do is I don't want to be dropping my head. I want my head to be erect, and I want to bring that front sight to my head. And I want to see that front sight every time. So that's the key, is to be able to train yourself to use the sight systems and the accessories that you have to be able to get a little faster. And the speed that you pick up here will translate itself out into the real range, especially the target to target speed, but certainly the first shot speed, because that's what it's all about, okay, is, is seeing that front sight faster and having the confidence to know that the shot is right where you want it to go, and you can pull that trigger, and you're going to hit that shot every time. Bang, bang, bang. Five, five, five. Just like that. So we can use these guns in that environment, and that's a really good thing to try to do. And again, you can also do it with a pistol. Coming up, and, and what we're looking to do, if you get a profile here, You'll see I'm looking to keep my head straight and bring that front sight into my eye. Okay, My eye is looking at the target. I'm just bringing that front sight up into that, that cone of accuracy. And that's what I call the sweet spots theory. It's, it's something that I, I noticed all the competition shooters were doing. They're keeping their head still. Head is erect. Eyes are focused on the target. Up comes the pistol or the front sight and the gun, the sight, goes into my line of sight. I'm bringing the barrel to the target. Okay, I'm bringing the front sight to my eyes. And I've done this so many times, practice so often, that I can do it basically, you know, bang. There it is every time. It just feels that way. And now, when I'm ready to shoot, basically just thrust the gun out. And I can hit just that quick. You know, you don't really have to aim, quote unquote. You are basically looking at the target and bringing the front sight into that field of view to be able to get fast and accurate shots. And that's the key to this whole thing is fast and accurate shots. And that's what we're trying to develop here. And I'm telling you, these airsoft guns really give you that ability to train in this real environment more so than you can train with live fire. Because one, it's less expensive. And two, you can do it at a moment's notice. Half hour, walk outside and shoot 100 shots. Shoot four or 500 shots, to be quite honest. In a half hour, you can shoot four or 500 shots and be that much faster and come back in and eat, eat uh, dinner and be, you know, versus driving to the range, getting set up, getting all your ammo out and spending, you know, you know what ammo costs nowadays. What, 10 cents a piece? So it'd be 40, 50 bucks in ammo right there, if not more, to shoot those, that number of rounds. So the key is, is that you can, you can use these things conveniently and efficiently, and then when you tie it with a timer, what we're about to do, you can really start to develop your speed. So with that in mind, I've got my timer out, and um, I've got it set for a two-second par set. Okay, remember what the par set again is? First buzzer will go off, and I've got it random set, and two seconds later, that's two seconds, all right? It seems like a pretty, pretty good amount of time, and it really is when you get right down to it, because we're going to go ahead and practice real quick and get ourselves set up to shoot all these targets in two seconds with two shots each. So first off, the first drill we're going to do, just trying to get ourselves warmed up here, is just two shots on one target. So I'm going to push the buzzer, get myself dialed in, one, two. That easy, okay? Lots of time, right? Now, let's go two shots on each target, on just on two targets, just going one, two, and one, two.
oh, a little brain freeze there and a little trigger freeze. It does happen though, okay? It happens with real guns, happens with uh, these guns as well. So let's do it again, see if I can get, get there. Certainly a lot of time. Lots of time there, okay? So now two shots on all three targets within two seconds. So now I gotta speed it up a little bit, okay? You really have to be fast, have to anticipate. I'm gonna come over here so you can see all three targets. Whew. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I got the time down, but I froze on that first one again, huh? All right, here we go. Let's try it again. Oh, <laughs> getting a little sloppy there. All right, I'll get it. Okay, that's what this is all about. A little bit of practice. I certainly can make this. I know I've done it before. Ah, geez, I'm getting the shots off, just not getting the accuracy. Here we go. Ready? Come on. Get it. Get on it. There you go. Okay. It's tough, but that's the idea behind using the timer. How fast are you, really? Can you get six shots in two seconds from a reaction time? Understanding that human reaction time uh, for most people is 0.25 seconds. So that means when I hear the buzzer, it's taking me 0.25 seconds to get up and even think about moving the gun. Okay, my brain is, oh, there's the buzzer. Uh, okay, move. Most people, like I said, are 0.25. Uh, I would like to think I'm a little bit faster, but who knows, okay? Uh, I am getting older, but uh, bottom line is that 0.25 of that two seconds, which is one eighth of the entire time, is eaten up by just thinking, uh oh, there's the buzzer, move, okay? So really what we have in there is you have 1.75 seconds to shoot six shots. So do the math, divide that out, and what do you get? You get about uh, 0.3 per shot, okay, with a little bit of movement. Right? And that's the key is to, uh, uh, to, to see that, hey, I can make those kind of times. And you can also uh, start to play some other scenarios and some other timing things. One of the things I like to do with Airsoft, again, is a little bit of movement. Can you start down here, you're walking, and get your shots off in a time that allow you to stop access the gun, shoot the target. Okay, you can also do other drills, which we'll show later on, that will challenge your timing, okay? You can play with the timer, play with your shots, play with your target positions. Uh, you can start to lean around corners. You can start to enter rooms. You can do all kinds of fun things with the timer. The key is to really focus on your fundamentals. And one of the things we talked about just briefly earlier is, is training with these accessories and being able to, to say to yourself, am I faster holding the gun here or holding it here? What would work better for me? And that really comes down to personal preference. Uh, am I more accurate holding the gun here or holding the gun here? Okay. We know that the foregrip really is um, a convenient tool to have because it gives you something to hold onto that gun a little bit easier, especially when you have the Picatinny rail. These will get hot, even though you have the plastic um, uh, covers on them. They're going to get hot. You could burn yourself a little bit. So the, the, the foregrip really has some advantages to it. But some guys I know think they shoot better this way, okay, with the gun in a more traditional stance. So you, that would be uh, the uh, thing that you could train, again, here in this scenario with a timer to see how your times go. So before I close the segment out, I'm going to go ahead and shoot that uh, at uh, six targets, or excuse me, six shots in two seconds again, all three targets. I know I can do it. This is the fun part about this game here. There we go. So you can see it's fun, <laughs> especially with this kind of gun, because it'll shoot as fast as you can pull the trigger. And that's really one of the other things you're training here is that trigger dexterity, because the ability to pull that trigger without disturbing the sight picture is something that really comes into play with air, airsoft. Whether it be with a handgun or with a long gun, again, keeping in mind that there is no recoil per se, quote unquote, even though the slide is moving back, there's a little bit of recoil, but there's not a lot of smoke and not a lot of violent reaction. So the key is now is your body being able to keep the sights lined up as you execute shot to shot. 
And those techniques and those skills start with the fundamentals. Grip, stance, sight picture, trigger pull, trigger manipulation. How fast can you manipulate that trigger? And you can practice right here with Airsofts. Okay, so you just saw the high speed clip of a Glock shooting live ammunition. And one of the interesting things about that, if you really, you know, watch is, and again, it's a super high, high speed. So, bang, gun goes off, bullet exits before anything happens. Bullet exits, then the gun comes up and comes back onto target for the next shot. Now, the elapsed time there for that entire sequence for the gun to go up and back on shot is less than 0.10, 0 0.10, should I say, less than 0 0.10. So the thing to remember when we're training with airsoft here is that even though there is not a lot of recoil, the ability to, to keep a strong grip on the gun and to maintain the proper fundamentals of your shoulder weight over your toes and your uh, arms in that athletic stance, okay, and again, left hand is more dominant than my right hand, okay, I'm really squeezing the gun with my left hand, I'm, I've got my right hand here and I put my left palm on the gun and then I have probably 70% of the pressure right here with this left hand where my right hand it almost lets go. Well, it doesn't let go quite, you know, like that, but it really doesn't have as much strength as I'm consciously holding that because I want this trigger finger to be loose. I want it to be able to move fast. So I don't want to squeeze too hard and then restrict that movement. I want it to be kind of loose and I want to squeeze my right hand with my left hand to hold the gun. So now in a real situation, bang, bang, boom. Again, you can shoot and you'll see when you go to the range, if you have good fundamentals, you'll be able to do very close double taps. Shots that are just, you know, right next to each other, just like we're, we're demonstrating here. So, that all starts with fundamentals, and you have to have the same fundamentals here, and even more so because you want to keep on training. Don't get lazy here with airsoft. Make sure that you have a strong grip because you're exercising the muscles that you're gonna use out there in the real world. You're exercising your hands. Some of the best pistol shooters I know have been mechanics or other type of laborers who use their hands a lot because their hands are very strong. Okay, you want to have strong hands because that's controlling the pistol. And I know a lot of you think, oh, well, gee, that gun's going to jump out of my hand and how do I get so fast with it? You know, it, there's no comparison with, with uh, airsoft and with uh, live uh, fire. Well, you know, in reality, a 9mm, 40 caliber, 45, you should be able to control that thing if you put a little bit of muscle behind it. And if you put the proper techniques. And the proper techniques are to use that left hand to really squeeze that right hand and to maintain a boxer's stance or athletic stance when you're shooting so you've got your weight forward, weight over your toes, and then ride that puppy out. Shoot and maintain and get back on target. See that front sight the whole way through. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, there's going to be a little bit of muzzle rise, more so than with airsoft. But the key is, is to keep your eyes, train your eyes to maintain that front sight. So when you actually are shooting here in airsoft, you can do the same type of groups and the same speed that you need to and you want to in the real world. So that's how airsoft guns can be used effectively and the same things you do here will transfer to real firearms. Let's move on to our next segment. Okay, it's time to have a little bit of fun, and the fun is going to be a uh, course of fire that I put together called the uh, Airsoft Tactical Challenge, A-S-T, all right? And so um, basically I've got three targets set up here, and again, you can download these targets from our website for free, 
I'm going to challenge you to take the course of fire. There's a total of 60 shots. We've got three targets set up. Each target is about a six foot man. Now you could play with the target sizes, positions, distances if you want, but I'm going to make this you know, fairly a standard course of fire uh, so that everybody can kind of uh, judge how they do and uh, see if you can improve. And uh, we've got some times in with to shoot these uh, targets as well. But let's look at our targets real quick. Again, our headshot target has a five point zone, a four point zone, one and two. Okay, uh, down here on the body target, uh, this is basically a five. Out here on the white is four. Anywhere up in here is four. Off the target, obviously, is a miss and is a zero. On the target itself would be three. Okay, so any shots on the target itself are three. So it's in here is uh, five, four, three. Up here we have five, four, one. Anything out here is a miss as well because obviously you're missing the head. Uh, same is true on this other target. These targets are about three feet apart. And again, boom. And here I have uh, the headshot target, the actual head itself, because it's just a little bit more fun and a little bit more realistic. You know, what's interesting is that when you start to see this in your sight picture, thing, it looks a little different. Uh, obviously, uh, he's got a handgun. He's a bad guy. He's a threat. I'm looking to go ahead and get him right up here in the eyes or forehead. Right here. This, this is my kill zone right here. I'm looking to, to really get there. Uh, the distance that we're going to shoot from, about 10 feet. Pretty normal. So you could do this in your garage. Most garages are 20 by 20 or something like that. So it's one, two, three, and there's about 10 feet. First stage of fire we're going to do is going to be uh, just two shots on two targets. So my first uh, objective is to shoot two shots in a body and two shots in a body. I'm going to do that in three seconds. That'll be stage one or phase one of stage one, okay? And uh, then I'm going to go ahead and do two shots in the head only, two and two. And then after that, it'll be one, 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 all right? But the first phase of this is two shots in the body, two shots in the body. We're going to do those within three seconds. Now again, three seconds is a lot of time. Okay, so I've got my par set already to three seconds. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just mount this gun, make sure the sight's on. It is. Okay, so I have one, two, one, two. My highest score, by the way, that I've ever scored on this, uh, it was uh, 294. All right, so it's, uh, I haven't been perfect. There's a total of 60 shots. Each point is worth, each shot is worth five points. So 60 times five is, is 300. So I had a 294. That was my best score so far. And I've only done this like, uh, I don't know. 20 or 30 times. So, <laughs> so here we go. Uh, bottom line is, it's a lot of fun, and this is one of those things you can challenge your friends at. So first phase is uh, of stage one here is two shots in the body and two shots in the body, and that's it. Here we go. And it's on start. Okay. So far, so good. Lots of time. Two shots. Two shots. Perfect so far, loving it, okay? And again, this is like I said, this is one of those things, uh, you bring some friends over and you can actually uh, challenge them and play for nickels or something like that and have a lot of fun. Uh, the next phase of this stage one is two shots in the head and two shots in the head. And for that, we're gonna give ourselves one extra second. Now, you don't have to do this, but I'm making it easier for everybody and for myself so that we all, like I said, have a nice easy starting point. You can certainly make this more challenging if you increase the times. So now we have four seconds to execute two headshots from the low ready position. Again, I'm using the carbine. If you were working with a pistol, you'd start in a low ready down here and just come up or start the gun in one hand, whichever you prefer, whichever you think is more challenging. Um, it's really up to you. Okay, so we're looking for headshots here. And... Lots of time, you can see that, and again, four seconds. Hey, it's not, not fast, but not slow, all right? You can see I've got two good shots and two good shots. Now, this last stage of, or phase of stage one will be one shot in the head, one shot in the body, one shot in the head, one shot in the body, in any order, really, okay? It's just one and one. So you can go body, head, head, body, whatever you, you feel like. Uh, and again, you get four seconds for that. Now, this uh, really, uh, challenges your ability to move the front sight and lock into a target. 
lock, lock, lock. All right? <clears throat> Here we go. Body head, body head. Four seconds. Ooh, just got it. Whew. Boy, oh boy. Okay, so got a little lazy there, but I just got through and got all my shots in. So now, at the end of stage one, there's a total of six shots in each target. And you can see right now I've got three and a five, three and a five, three and a five, three and a five. There's two shots here, and there's two shots right there. So, so far, doing pretty good. Now, you could at this point, if you like, tape these up so that you'll be able to determine where your shots are next. And we're going to go ahead and do that right now. And then we'll come back and we'll shoot stage two. Okay, you can see that we are taping with just ordinary scotch tape right over top of the holes so we know where those holes were and then we won't be confused with our next stage. So again, uh, got six shots in each target, everything was a five, haven't dropped any points. We're going to go ahead and move on now to our next stage, stage two. And stage two is basically a repeat of stage one, the same shooting sequence. The only difference here is that we start with the gun on the table, all right? Maybe something a little bit more realistic uh, for uh, people, certainly uh, in, a, um, in a handgun stage, you know, gun may not be on your person. And uh, again, that will challenge you to uh, access the front sight, to pick up the front sight, and to get ready to shoot. Uh, the times will be the same, basically. The first one, we're going to go ahead and keep it four seconds. We're going to pick it up, access, one, two, one, two. That's the body shots. Then the next phase will be two headshots, and then we'll go one, two, three, four again. So here we go. Got four seconds to pick the gun up and to uh, put two shots in the body on the first two targets. And there's my timer. Looking at the gun. Oh, and I got a little sloppy. You saw that. I didn't access that site quick as I wanted to. And they pulled one out of the uh, five. So I'm down one point. And that really upsets me. <laughs> because that was just stupid. You see what I did is I was starting to go to the next target, swinging before I made the shot. All right, let's do it again. We're going to headshots. Lots of time here. You don't have to be in too big of a hurry. And let me move this in a little closer so you can see that target. Here we go. All right. And again, uh, if you slow down, you actually shoot faster. Saw the shots well, saw the front sight well. Two shots, two shots. So now it's one to the body, one to the head, one to the body, one to the head. Same uh, sequence, same time is four seconds at 10 feet. Here we go. Lots of time, slow down. And was slow. So I dropped a point, and that kills me because that's five points. So I dropped five, and one is six. And that was just sloppiness because that was just too slow. And, um, you know, I just got to speed up a little bit there. Uh, this is still a five because it just hit the line. Uh, these guys are all in the five there. Everything's good here with the five. Everything's good here with the five. But again, I'm down six points. All right, we're going to go ahead and tape these up, and we're going to move on to the next stage three. All right, stage three, basically the same kind of thing. Uh, we're going to shoot the first two targets again. Two in the body, two in the body. Uh, then the second phase will be two in the head, two in the head. Then it'll be one, two, one, two. Or excuse me, you know, one, two, one, two. Now, the difference here is we're going to go ahead and walk. Okay, we're going to start in a walking mode. We're going to have the gun down in a low ready position. We're going to walk. The buzzer goes off. We turn, access, access, and go for our shots. First phase, we have three seconds, okay? This is the walking for the two big uh, body shots. Um, I'm going to go ahead and push my timer, and I'm going to start walking. Whew, just got him off. Okay, that surprised me. We went off a little faster than I thought, so I'm good. I got both in the body there. Good, good job. Uh, now it's headshots, okay? So I'm going to give myself uh, one more second. So I'm going to adjust my par time here, 
and do that like this. Come up one second. So now it's four seconds for the same drill, but this time they're headshots. That's the difference. Okay, here we go. All right, good. And you'll inter interesting. You'll see again, shot, shot. I'm swinging that from when I'm swinging the gun from the left, the right to the left. The, the, the shots are going right to left, so I really got to lock in and stop. Both shots were good right here on the first target. So now the last one is four seconds again, but this is one shot, one shot, one shot, one shot. So I really have to hurry, okay? I can't be lazy here because I, I dropped one last time and I was just, just being lazy. So now I've got to make sure I'm locking in here and going fast. Whew. Okay, here we go. Got it. Whew. See, I got plenty of time to spare too. That's what bothers me is I, you know, dropping that shot. You see, I had plenty of time and it just was lazy there, that, that last shot. And I just got, uh, got silly. And that's what happens. Your brain starts to think, oh, slow down. But no, you have to keep the pace and just see that front sight faster. So everything's good here. Didn't drop any shots. All the shots are within my five zone. And so I'm feeling better <laughs> because I did make that four second run with a shot, 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 shot. Now let's move on to uh, stage four. Okay, this is stage four of our airsoft challenge, and um, it is our speed stage. We're going to use all three targets, and we're going to shoot two shots, two shots, and two shots, and then do the same drill again, but two shots in the head two shots in the head, and two shots in the head. And we get to do that in three seconds. Now the key is we're going to do this a little bit closer from six feet or two yards, right about here. And the key again is to see that front sight, but to get through it because three seconds, well, that's not, not fast, but it's not slow either. All right. From the low ready position, Okay, dropped one, but that's okay, I'll take it. Still done all right, that's a total of six drops so far, seven drops so far. Now we're going to the head. Whew. All right, here we go. Whew, just got it, wow. Okay, so, six total shots. And then six more shots. There's a total of 12 for that stage. Everything's good there. Everything's good there. Ooh, just missed one here. So dropping one. Good up there. Two good shots here. And I'm going to call those uh, uh, fives, even though uh, they may be close. But I'm going to call those fives. So, all right. So now I dropped one more. So that's a, mo uh, a minus seven. So we're going to move on to the last stage. Again, remember there's 60 shots. Each one counts five points for 300 points. So this last stage will be 12 more shots, six and then six again to give us a total of 60. It'll be stage five. Okay, so last stage here, stage five. And one of the things that um, you'll notice as you go through a drill like this is that um, you know, this is a full size, full weight gun. And yeah, I've been holding it for now, what, two hours doing this here, shooting this thing with you guys. Um, it is uh, taxing somewhat. I mean, I'm not exhausted, but I certainly feel it, okay? It's just like when you go out and play golf, you know, and you walk, uh, you know, the 18 holes, if you walk the course, and uh, if you carry your own bag, you feel it after a while, you know, certainly. So the key to this drill, of course, is that it not only trains your mind, but it also trains your muscles in a special way that allow you to start to work and manipulate the handgun or the firearm. All right? so that's the key to this, uh, this whole exercise is not just shooting and having some fun, but you really are training, especially when you use the full size, full weight guns, and you put yourself under a little bit of stress with these timers. So I've got my targets taped up. Remember, I've dropped seven points so far. This is the last stage. It's going to be called the El Presidente. 
All right, it's a modified El Presidente because we're going to go ahead and shoot two body shots, two body shots, two body shots going left to right, and then we're going to do two body shots, two body shots, two body shots going from right to left. So you switch. You can go either which way you want first, but you do want to go uh, in this drill one way and then go, you stop, sit, reset, and then go the other way. The trick here is that we start facing the targets backwards. So we're going to start here. Buzzer is going to go off. We're going to turn, access, access, access. All right. Uh, the time that I've got allocated for this is four seconds. Seems like a lot of time, but again, there's that added element of getting around, getting a stance, seeing the sight, seeing the sight, and making sure you execute the shots. All right. <laughs> Ready? Let's check that part time, make sure I'm four seconds. And it is. You see how important the timer is, too, all right? because you really need the times. Now, one of the things we have on this DVD and one of the chapter menus is we have times for you in case you don't have a timer. You can just play the DVD for the, the different times. It's right on the menu. Just click it up and play it as you like. So I'm going to go ahead now. Again, we're back to our 10-foot distance. Okay, We're going to turn. You can turn any way you want. Access, access, access. Whew. Here we go. You ready? A little sloppy, but I got them both in there. Whew, that was ugly. I did have a miss here, and I do have both shots in there. So, um, you know, trying to make up that time. You'll notice that the four seconds, I had plenty of time. You know, I had plenty of time to make that shot up. I, I, I finished with time. So, again, it's kind of that head game you have to play with yourself. And I uh, dropped another point, so that's going to put me down to uh, 292, I guess. Whew. All right, one more phase here. Got to clean this guy right here. All right, and this time I'm going to go from right to left. Last time I went left to right. Tons of time. Took my time on that. Saw that front sight. Finished with lots of time. And I had good shots. So, you know, when you, if you learn anything from this game, and that is that you basically have time if you see the front sight and you do the fundamentals. You know, that's what I'm trying to do is, is, is to uh, train myself, train my mind to see that front sight faster, to relax, to work within the time that I've got, and to know that, hey, that's you know, pretty fast. Turning around, accessing the gun, shooting, you know, one is responding to the buzzer, should I say, turning around, accessing the gun, seeing the front sight, shooting the shot, stop, shots, stop, shots, stop. All six of those shots, all that motion within four seconds, that's pretty challenging. I want you to try it. And I'd like you to try this course of fire and then uh, let us know how you're doing. You know, send in your time. Send in, if you have some video and you want to uh, send a video of your course in, send it in. We'll post it on the website. We're looking for people who can uh, uh, show us how fast they can be. And if you want to get even faster, you want to make this even more difficult, start to shave a half second off your times. Those times will be on the DVD. Again, we're going to give you times from 0.5 all the way up to uh, uh, 6 seconds in 0.5 increments. So you can play with the times and see how fast you really are and see how you can translate the skills you learn right here to better accuracy, better speed, and more confidence out on the range. All right, to summarize the Airsoft Challenge and how I did, I dropped a total of eight points out of a possible 300. So my score was 292 points, which isn't bad. Again, I've done a little better. I've had 294. Uh, shooting with the uh, carbine is uh, a different challenge than shooting with a pistol for me. I practice more with a pistol, but it uh, sure is a lot of fun. And uh, again, the, that's part of this is that you could get a whole bunch of guys over, run people through a course of fire, and just literally have fun, but also train at the same time. And using a timer really helps keep everybody honest. Uh, bottom line is, again, uh, if you miss a shot, it's minus five. If you don't get a shot within the time, it's minus five. Remember, I had that one minus five there because I didn't get one of the shots in. Uh, so that would really severely affect your score, of course. So anytime you uh, uh, want to set this up, you can download these targets from our website. It's pretty easy. Uh, again, it's a lot of fun. I, I enjoy these classes a lot, uh, or these courses a lot, because it, it does teach you something new every time. If you start to look at your targets and see 
the patterns that you have and see where you're missing or where you're making mistakes and see uh, that you can have time if you see that front sight faster and kind of slow down when you're looking at that front sight. Don't be in such a hurry. Uh, you'll find that you'll you know, really improve out there in the range. So let me shoot one more of these for you and then we're going to do some other fun things with Airsoft that you can't do with real guns to help you train tactics and techniques inside of houses. So here I go. I'm going to go ahead and do one more of these uh, El Presidentes for you because it's just too much fun. And certainly a lot faster with a pistol because that's what I do. All right, we spoke earlier about being able to use airsoft guns in ways that you can't use real guns. And today just happens to be a special day in my office because uh, we're going to be replacing the carpet. And uh, we've taken all of the uh, furniture out and all the uh, people are gone, basically. So we're going to go ahead and talk about how to use uh, an airsoft gun uh, in this kind of environment with targets and with a timer. Again, shooting at targets can be dynamic if you make it dynamic. And there's a couple ways to do so. One. You can position these targets in certain areas that are, are real. This is a real environment. This is where you would actually you know, be coming around a, a, a wall, coming around a corner, and engaging targets. So we can do this in a couple of different ways. We can, one, just you know, kind of walk through the scenario. I've got a target placed over here. And you'll see it'll be coming through that uh, doorway. There's a little hallway right here. So basically what's going to happen is I'm going I'm to come through here, and I'm going to engage this one target. Now the key to this whole dynamic issue is that I want to engage this target and I want to keep moving because there's another bad guy down there. So I want to come in and engage quickly, keep moving and turn the gun and get, get up here on this guy right here. So there is a scenario that you, know, you can set up and keeping in mind that you know, this could be a, a real life scenario that you come through a doorway. Now tactical rules have it that you never really want to stand in a doorway. When you breach a doorway, you want to come in and keep going and get out of that doorway because doorways are unique areas because your mind, again, you shoot with your mind, your mind sees that doorway and it makes it an easier target. So if you're standing in the doorway, it's easy for even novice shooters to point the gun at that doorway. It's an automatic target because it's just the way your mind sees it and makes it easy to get the gun up there and then make you know, fairly accurate shots without a lot of practice into a doorway area. So as a, uh, as a tactical practitioner, we want to get through that doorway quick and get out of that tunnel of death because statistics show that if you stand in that doorway, you're going to get shot if someone's got a gun on the other side. Uh, the other thing that can be done is you can obviously come through these scenarios, have some times on your timer, see how fast you can get through and challenge yourself to get through faster. Then to take it one notch up, you can have your friends move the targets around a little bit so you don't know where they're going to be. So you come through the doorway and you're searching for the targets. Or you could have good guy, bad guy targets, shoot, no shoot targets. We sell full size, uh, life size targets of people that you can actually put up here and some of the people are good guys and some of the people are bad guys. Some have hostages. So you can take these target scenarios to the next level based upon your desire and your skill level and how fast and how far you want to take it. Again, what I like about this is that you can shoot in a real world environment with these airsoft guns, being that they're full size, full weight, exact manipulation skills, exact sight picture skills, and be able to uh, uh, simulate moving with a firearm in a real world environment. So we're going to go ahead and do our first drill here. And let me show you. I've got two targets set up inside this little area here. Uh, target A, target B. And then down the hallway, as we come in, I'm going to go walk through here and show you. Down the hallway, all the way down, we've got our first target. Okay, this would be, say, target one. Then target A was target two, and target three would be the last target. So this target, we're going to shoot all the way down the hallway. This is probably, uh, what, uh, 15 yards? I'm not going to go ahead and count it off. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, say 13 yards all the way down the hallway. So my objective here is I'm going to clear this area, come across, come around here, clear this guy, and I want to get a very good strong sight picture on this first shot because it's a long shot. Okay, I don't want to be rushing through here, and I certainly don't want to have any lateral movement. 
if, it, if there's any movement whatsoever, I want to come across and I want to move right towards the target and make my shot as I'm moving toward the target because I'll be more accurate. If I'm moving sideways, I'll have a chance to miss, I'll be less accurate. Uh, the other thing I want to do too is, is I want, as I clear the corner, it's very important that you clear the corner with a gun in the shooting position because you don't really know what's on the other side of that corner. There's a couple ways to handle the corner, obviously, and one of the ways is that you can peek. But when I peek, I want to have the gun come with me. I want the gun to be part of my eye. I want the front sight to be part of my eye. So I want to keep my entire body back away so the bad guy doesn't see me. And when I come out, the first thing he's going to see is the muzzle of my gun. All right, so I want to come out and my gun is locked up to my shoulder, it's locked up to my eye, and I basically want to peek and come, up, come out. If I need to squeeze the shot, where I'm looking, the bullet will go. So the idea behind that is instinctively, your mind, your eye will go to the bad guy. And if you lock yourself in, you lock the gun into your shoulder, into your eye, the muzzle will go with you. Wherever you look, the muzzle goes. So that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to lock ourselves in, keep ourselves small. See, I'm compressing my shoulders. I don't want to be out here like this and get shot in the arm. Keep myself small, peek, and bang, be able to shoot. Peek, bang, shoot, okay? So again, it's locked up, bang. So we want to do it quick too. We want to see how fast we can get around and just do shots. Lock up on the target. Lock up on the target. And we're going through, we're keeping the gun locked up, and we're seeing the front sight as we clear. We're looking at the front sight, we're looking at the bad guy. And that's a long shot. Again, it's 13 yards, 14 yards. That's long for um, a self defense scenario. In true self defense, I'd want to go out the front door. I wouldn't want to uh, engage this guy. But for law enforcement, military purposes, we are engaging guys like this, okay? Especially if they're armed, we're going after them. So, now, let's take this one step uh, further. If I want to go around the corner and keep on going, I come around again, the gun is locked up, okay, I know what I'm doing, I've got the gun locked up, come around, there's my bad guy, shoot, okay, so bang. As I aggressively approach the target, I'm shooting, bang, bang, and now I'm going to clear this other doorway. So I'm, my two shots here, one, two, come across, and come across. So if you look, obviously these are pretty good shots, decent, okay? And I would think, based upon what I felt, that this was my first shot and this is my second shot. Came in rather fast, swung to the target, you can see I'm swinging from this side up, there's the first shot, there's the second shot. So I shot a little early, but in a self-defense scenario, you know, it's okay to shoot a little early if, if you have a clean shot at a bad guy without any uh, innocence standing by, you know, your, your goal is to start shooting as fast as you can. So you can see as I swung the gun up, I saw the front sight on the, on the uh, target, took a shot, locked up on the second shot, bang. So that's kind of how you want to approach these things and, and understanding that certain scenarios will dictate more accuracy and more accuracy dictates more attention to that front sight and the sight picture. So this is one way in which you can use uh, this target scenario. Now let's go up one more notch and use the timer. I'm going to set the time for four seconds to do all three of these shots, all three of these targets, six shots. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this puppy on. And my par time, I'm going to go ahead and show you. Let's see here. Par time is four seconds. So that means again, once I push the button, it'll go off. And I got four seconds to clear all the shots. Okay, there it is. All right, so Again, remember what we talked about, keeping ourselves tight. You always want to be small. You know what they say is all, in the Navy SEALs, they say all my tall friends are dead because big guys are bigger targets, okay? So you, if you're a big guy, keep yourself as small and as compact as possible. Try not to get in the habit where you're shooting up here like this because that just makes yourself bigger. Getting shot in the arm is no good, okay? You can't shoot again. So keep yourself tight. The other thing keeping yourself tight is, and, and watch, watch just this whole scenario, is that I have now some pieces of meat in front of my vital organs, okay? I have an arm in front of my heart versus being up here and exposing myself. Now, if you're wearing body armor, obviously, this is a different story, but you still want to keep those arms out of harm's way. So keep them tight to your body. Keep yourself compact. All right, four seconds going through. Well, here we come. Gun is mounted. And so we got through. Two shots on the white, two more shots on the white again, you know, thinking about how you use these targets, 
What are you seeing happening? What's, how's it printing? It's printing again. I think this is my first shot right here and my second shot here. It's moving right through. Again, didn't want to stand in the doorway. Want to come all the way through the target. You'll see if you really understand what are you doing? Well, I'm swinging that gun up, trying to get there fast. And you'll notice one, two as the gun is swinging. Now, could I be better and have better double taps? I sure could. Want to maybe lock up into that top target and really lock, lock down. But in this kind of scenario, when there's time involved and there's other bad guys who could be shooting at me, you know, you want to get those shots off as fast as possible and you want to be as accurate as possible and as accurate as necessary because in a real world, these would make a difference. Okay, there may be a couple more shots required, but bottom line is that's going to go ahead and make a big dent on my opponent and uh, make him not be able to shoot me. At least we hope so. But with a gun like this, you would expect that that would be uh, the case. Let's go look at our other target here. So you can see I've got some pretty good shots here. Got a couple good shots up here. And at this distance, I do have a miss. You know, I'll be honest with you, not good. But, you know, that's what you expect. So boom, 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 boom. One, two, three, four. So feeling, you know, pretty good about that distance. Again, thinking about distance and speed and movement really make it a little bit more difficult. Now let's do the same thing with another gun. Okay, we're going to do the same exact concept again, but now this time with a handgun. Idea being that I want to uh, be able to train in this scenario with the guns that I think I'll have. And more than likely, in a home defense situation, I'm going to have this gun more so than a, a carbine, okay? Uh, although if you know there's a gunfight, uh, the old adage is uh, take, uh, leave your pistol at home, take the rifle, because the rifle is more firepower, is more stopping power, larger magazine capacity, and uh, certainly um, a better accuracy at longer distances. However, with a handgun, you do have some minor so I say minor advantages because you can get around and get and move a little faster because the gun, the long gun is bigger and it does prohibit some of your movement. I'm going to do the same scenario. I'm going to come through this doorway. I'm going to engage the long shot because that's the first target I see and come through the doorway, engage, engage, and see if we can get through here pretty fast. Um, like I said, make this more challenging, reduce the time. A little bit more challenging, move the targets around, okay? So you don't know where they're at. Uh, you know, in this scenario, we're going to go ahead and just go through the drill, same uh, thing with the timer. I'm going to lean around and I'm going to get going. So it's four seconds to shoot six shots on three targets and moving. All right? Here we go. Again, same thing is true. I want to come around this corner with the gun fully engaged. I don't want to start down here. I want the first thing the bad guy is going to see is my muzzle. Okay? And I'm looking right down the lane for him too. All right? Here we go. All right. Well, I got two shots right here. I knew I could feel that. That felt very good. And I believe my other two shots, I know I've, one of these guys is hit. And I think it's down here. So feeling pretty good about that accuracy. And, and, and again, you know, there's a million different ways you can approach tactics. And each department, each agency has their own scenarios. But with Airsoft, I hope you can see that really it's a dynamic way for you to train not only accuracy and speed, but also your manipulation and your tactics. And you can take this one step further too, and that's to actually have live bad guys in the room that you're going to shoot against. And that is really the epitome of uh, airsoft tactical training, is to use other people. Now, those scenarios are difficult to set up and be realistic because you certainly don't want a bad guy sitting in the corner with a gun and think that that's you know, going to be realistic because you're not going to beat him. Okay? Chances are you're not going to be able to do that. But if the bad guys were sitting there with a the hand down and they were talking to each other and you breached the room, hey, that's, scenario, that's a good scenario. If the bad guys are sitting on a desk and, and the, the gun is on the chair, or excuse me, they're sitting on the chair and the gun is on the desk and you breach the room and they've got to reach up and come around and do something, that's pretty realistic too. Uh, certainly, if there's a bad guy hiding in the corner and you're a law enforcement officer, you send in the dogs. That's what the dogs are for. But in, in this scenario, uh, obviously there is some really good things you can do with bad guys. Full face mask, big heavy sweaters, guns in hand or gun on, on a table or even gun in a holster and, and be able to really sim, uh, simulate some things that, again, you can't do with um, live fire firearms. I'm Lenny McGo. I want to say thank you for watching.
safe shooting, always safety first, keep these guns pointed in a safe direction, and good luck with your airsoft training.